Returning to WAC, we'll quickly go through the differences in WAC analysis for a private company compared to a public company. But again, using a ballpark WAC and sensitizing it would work just fine. Because there is no publicly available market information for the company we are valuing, we need to figure out how to calculate the cost of debt, the capital structure, and beta. And so we'll go through that in the next few pages. Just as we might do actually with a public company, we use a target capital structure based on comparable companies instead of our private company's capital structure. Based on the comps we have, we take an average or median debt to capitalization and equity to capitalization ratio and use those as the industry and our target capital structure. It's advisable to take into account what we believe will happen indefinitely to the company's capital structure. For example, we might be putting a lot of leverage on this company today if it's an LBO, but will we be levering the company at a high level indefinitely? If we will be doing that, then we may want to make sure the target capital structure reflects that. But if this is if this level of leverage is only for the next handful of years, we want to use the industry target capital structure. Looking at cost of debt, our cost of debt should be in line with any leverage that we plan to put on the company. If we don't have any immediate plans for that, we take a look at the yield to maturities of debt with a similar credit rating that we believe the company we're evaluating would get from Moody's and S&P. We could also ask, ask someone in the debt capital markets group to provide some guidance here. Looking to beta, it's pretty tricky because beta is technically how sensitive the stock price is to volatility in the market or how uh, sensitive returns are to returns uh, that the market experiences. Of course, we don't have a share price or returns analysis to run a regression on, and Bloomberg generally doesn't publish betas for private companies. So it's up to us to figure out how to handle the beta piece of the cap end to figure out cost of equity. Thus, we look to industry betas. But because industry peers likely have different capital structures, we need to undo the distorting impacts of their different capital structures. This is known as delevering comps. Then we'll relever them at the target company's target capital structure. So again, with the same set of comps, we delever each beta using the equation shown here, and then take an average industry delevered beta. In this case, 0.48. Once we've derived the unlevered industry beta, we need to relever it at the target capital structure using the reverse of the formula. Applying our new tax rate, we get a relevered beta for Starlight of 